All right, y'all, let's get kicked off with the 2022 Riley Retreat Tour. Um, this is the entrance to our home. We have um, a line of gardenia bushes, and then um, we lost some of these Leyland Cypress during uh, Hurricane Ida. Here we have a, another row of hydrangeas. That's uh, slow growing, but uh, I imagine this will be just really beautifully abundant over the next few years. Um, in this area, as you saw in previous videos, we took out three large trees and this is gonna be our perennial flower beds. So here we are um, practicing prepping the soil. And this is a combination of wood chips when the uh, tree stumps were ground up and then horse bedding from a neighbor. So the idea here is for about a year, you let this sit and the soil underneath is gonna turn into um, really healthy microbe and fungal rich soil. So as you can see here, this is the area directly below this oak tree and it's not very happy. Um, this is the highest part of the land. So we have a lot of runoff that just comes straight off this. As you can see very hard, sandy, clay mixture, but not, not the ideal, sort of more sand than clay. Um, so if we just take a look, this is the newest of the three rows. Um, we're gonna dig into that soil and just look a little bit closer. There was some of this, um, this mixture of wood chips and horse bedding here. And you can even see just right here that that's a lot richer, a lot darker, more chocolate cake looking. Um, so let's, let's go to that oldest row. Uh, another factor to note here, this was a lot of rocks and I took a tractor and excavated a good bit of it, but I, I wasn't able to really get all the rocks out. So that is a contender with some of this area, these two rows especially, this last row not so much. So let's take a look. You can see the, uh, the original wood chips from the trees start right here. And if I dig into there, uh, still very clay, but not, not nearly as sandy. And look how loose that is. I mean, very easy to dig into. Um, We'll take a look at this, this row right here. Lots of fresh wood, um, wood chips and horse bedding. So, I mean, you can see, I'm not sure how good the lighting is. Let's see lots of fungal mycelial nets. Oh, that white is the mycelium. And that's exactly what we want. This will all break down very quickly within a year two years it'll be very oh yeah look at that that's delicious mm -hmm. all right so um for example where we have the gardenia bushes that was a pile of wood chips just about this height and over i want to say the course of a year or two maybe two years it's broken down to almost soil level um, so a little history of this year, we, uh, we were pregnant and had a newborn going through a lot of growth, personal growth and, um, changes. So a lot of this is an example of how permaculture zones change. What was right out the front door wasn't really manageable. Um, but this was probably my favorite success. One of them for sure. Right now it looks wild, but this is a mixture of uh, white jasmine and the um, rose, the Katrina rose, uh, Peggy Martin. And it has these small little pink roses. And my wife took a beautiful picture on her 23rd birthday. Is that 20? I don't know. <laughs> I don't think that's right. Um, 30th birthday, I think. 
uh, on the back wall. So I will come through and just trim this all up like a hedge and just keep uh, weaving it through. This fence is knocking down a bit, so I'm not sure exactly how long this will last. We will figure out that when the time is needed. Um, here's our overgrown blackberries. We were managing this um, and we will continue to once um, we have time and the season gets closer, just pulling these weeds out. So, you know, still mulching as much as we can. Um, my grass catcher wasn't really operable as we've had months of rain, which is certainly better than a hurricane um, this season. So here is our fruit trees. Uh, let's see. All right, I had a low power warning for a moment. Fruit trees, this is um, kumquat, and we can see, see some of that's about to get going here. I put down some plywood just because this is such a wild area and I was going to toss it anyway. Um, keep the weed down, weeds down for a little bit. It looks a little trashy, but it'll biodegrade and, and just allow these plants, my avocado tree here, to get some sun. This plant's not the happiest. Um, it's had some dieback, but we're still getting surviving. We're still surviving. Um, what is good is this avocado bark is green, and when it's green, it's uh, vulnerable to sun damage. As you can see on this side, uh, it's starting to brown up a, a good bit. It's starting to turn into more of a tree bark um, protective layer. So, fingers crossed. I'm hoping he does great. We shall see. A fig tree over here. So, a little bit more slow growing than... Uh, some of the other fig trees we have, but still doing great. Um, barn. Barn's really exciting. We are in the process of... Let's see, we'll go through this little nook back here. We're in the process of building an office in the barn. And I'm very excited about that. Um, be a nice secluded space to work and, and find some silence. Uh, our plumeria, that's our honeymoon plant, native, uh, it's a non-native, a tropical plant here. And we thought for sure it would, had died. You can see this was the original roots, um, but it came back and it's just such a gorgeous plant. Here's the, uh, the window in the barn. Just that one window makes such a world of difference in the, the space of how it feels. I'm super excited, hoping to get that wrapped up within the next two weeks. Forest entrance is doing wonderful. What I would like to do, but have very little experience with, is get goats in here to clean this uh, edge up a bit. And um, I'll show you the flower beds momentarily because um, I also wanted to get goats in there. Chickens for sure, cost of eggs. It's uh, outrageous, almost a dollar an egg. Um, plus we could certainly use their help with, with foraging and cleaning up stuff. So, um, that's to come, but we still have a lot of work and learning to do. Um, these are our shiitake mushroom logs and they did phenomenal. I actually had a few that I harvested just, um, earlier this, this week. Um, nothing on them right now. I'll, I'll probably need to soak them. As the temperature is dropping, I've learned that the mushrooms will fruit when they have enough water and it's the right temperature. Um, so this chaotic mess, I'm not sure what's going on with this red bucket here. Either just falling apart or something's attacking it. This is a lot of the flowers that we'll be putting into the... Um, the rows up there with the horse bedding and wood chips. <laughs> this is, it feels like chaos. Sometimes it's hard to see, but this is our Hugel progress. It is um, certainly growing in, in the areas where we have Hugels. This is another area I'd like the goats to come in and clean. Um, if they don't, I'm gonna highly consider the use of fire. Um, whenever it comes winter time, 
I'm also going to take the tractor and re-clean out the rows. Um, a lot of the trees that fell from Ida, we just shoved in here and we're in a bit of survival mode. Um, but that's life, right? We have to be resilient and roll with the changes. So all of this is wild blackberry and muscadine um, growing on what's probably a tongue tree. I'm not sure exactly what tree it is. Can't quite tell. Most likely tongue. But I mean, these are blackberries that are taller than me. So um, we did bush hog this at one point. Um, and we will need to figure out how to manage this once we have a little bit more downtime and i think that's coming got some trees that need to be cut um oh spider web on my face uh here's here's our pond area we do have a small pump just to keep the water moving to reduce mosquito populations uh, i mean it is just a trickle but it does the trick we had some um, beautiful tulip poplar trees fall down during the uh, hurricane. So this is, um, this is the forest path. It's still very accessible. It needs to be cleaned up a good bit. I mean, this tree falling and those roots are taller than me as well on its side. This is a highly eroded area that we planted some of these. Um, I don't even know what they are. Got them from a neighbor, but they, they're doing well in that water and holding the soil a little bit more. Um, would like to try some alternative techniques using spent mushroom blocks, which would create some filtration, but um, that's, that will be down the road, not a high priority. Nice to have, not need to have. So all this though, just for reference, was was and still is very wet. It's the lowest part of the land. And with that said, the land has taken to the wood and the soil um, as building, which is why we have so much more growth here. Um, totally just, this is our life right now. It's not what I would want but it is temporary pear trees there's a pear tree that died back but there's still rootstock here a gloomy berry bush a fig tree another fig tree and a banana tree um, so all this needs a lot of love and attention and it will get it but you can see here one of the trees that we cut down huge tree and look how it's just being slowly consumed back into the earth by the mycorrhizal fungi, little uh, wood eating creatures. Here we have an olive tree. Um, oh, a little caterpillar. Now's the time to, to be managing because they will decimate the leaves. I might, I'll probably come out here with a uh, a bucket. I like to collect them in a bucket and throw them to the fish in the pond. This was a giant pine tree. I was certainly sad to see it go, but also grateful because it, it just had some serious poison ivy vines that I couldn't manage. Um, spent a whole weekend and they just grew right back. So uh, another pineapple pear tree. It has some some root stock growing out the bottom that we need to clean up. Here was our vegetable garden. And all that we managed to plant was some cinnamon basil. <laughs> so um, this will, I'm sure, turn back into a vegetable garden at one point. Um, but it, again, that, that lesson that your zones are flexible in permaculture, this was easily accessible until we had another baby and then it was very unaccessible for a long time with the rain the mosquitoes and the needs of caring for a human um, so 
sad but realistic, things change. And, and part of the lesson that I realized through this process was how grateful I am for these perennials. They didn't need to be replanted, and yes, they need a lot of love. Uh, finally getting the grass catcher working again. Um, but throw some mulch, and it's, it's starting to get there, right? Um, these perennials will take care of us for years to come. Um, you plant a, a pear tree, and they say pears for your heirs. I was able to finally do a little bit of weed eating. Clearly, I need to do a lot more. But now that those three rows up front are done, I've asked um, for the wood chips to go here, the horse bedding, and it just it feels good. It looks good. So down the row we have a some form of orange, an apple tree, a satsuma. This is one of our goji berry bushes. There's another one in the weeds. This was a nectarine. It's died back to the rootstock, which I believe will be a peach. Um, we do have some asparagus. I've yet to harvest any of this, but it is doing great. I'd like to fill this with strawberries to keep the weeds down and have a harvestable byproduct. Um, but none of my strawberries have taken yet. Uh, this is a Meyer lemon, improved Meyer lemon variety. This is a cutting from the apple tree when I trimmed it. I believe that it's rooted, but um, no leaves as of yet. Let's see, this is our blood orange. I think this is one of the first trees that we've gotten. Um, I thought for sure he was a goner after the first year, but he is going to survive. And then this is our fig tree. We moved our honeybees. This was another Hurricane Ida uh, recovery zone. Uh, I'll try and get these tree stumps out of here at one point. Um, Got our honeybees, they're doing great. They were bringing in a ton of pollen just last week. Um, and the golden rod will be kicking up soon. Uh, let's see, over here was a failed mushroom experiment. I got some wood chips from a neighbor and they said that there was some hardwood in here, but I'm pretty sure it was only pine. So not very successful. Uh, another look at the blueberry bushes here. And then finally, this chaotic glory that is our flower bed, our annual flower beds. We managed to get one and a half row of flower beds. And, um, you know, we sold a little here and there, but um, not as much as we hoped. So, um, this area, my, my goal is to mulch these rows. So I'm laying cardboard down, just getting big sheets of cardboard from Lowe's and putting the mulch down. And then I'm gonna mulch the beds themselves over winter to start to kill back this weed pressure. Slow process, but totally worth it. Um, but this is the work of managing a land. Look at that butterfly. This is a healthy ecosystem. It's not a pretty or clean ecosystem. This was the superstar of this year, Solosia, that just volunteered. And we've cut and cut and cut, and it just, it's like service, just keeps growing back. Tried to put some goats here, still have a lot to learn uh, about fencing and goats. They were able to get right out, so that was an unsuccessful venture. Um, but for now, that's the, the tour. We are still very optimistic and, and happy with where we're at and know that there's a lot more that we want to do and will be doing. So hope you enjoyed it. This has been the Riley Retreat 2022 Garden Tour.